The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, sir. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We are thankful and grateful to the Almighty God for his blessing and his mercy, his truth and do it to all generations. Amen. We are thankful today that in spite of all that's going on around us, yes. we can say without a doubt that God has been good or done. Yes. Let us begin our worship this morning with Jesus keep me near the cross.
coming to you from Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 1. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that, that we do not drift away. For if the message spoken by, by angels was binding and, ever, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to, his, to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. I have read to you Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 1 through verse 4. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers, seekers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. I
And they understand, Father, that you are in control of all things. And then once they come to you, Father, turn to you, Father, because you are always there, Father, always. that things will be okay, Father. Yes, Lord. That things you, Lord. will be great, Father. Father, may they understand, Father, that your son Jesus came down here, Father, yes. to give his life for us, Father, yes. to give us for our sins, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. A lot of us, it was even a thought, Father. Oh, Lord. So I say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father. I ask that you continue to watch over your people, Father. Those that are all shut in, Please, locked away, Father, in, in jails, Father. Yes. They're sick in the hospitals, Father. Those yes. sitting yes. alone at home, Father. Yes. May they hear you, Father. Hear your voice, Father. Yes, Lord. Hear my big brother Jesus saying yes, to them, turn to you, Father. And believe in you, Father. And have faith in you, Father. Because their faith is strong, Father. Yes. And so it's a miracle work, Father. Yes. So I say yes. thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that you continue to just watch over them, Father. May they understand, Father, that your ways, Father, are not the ways of the world, Father. And that your blessings, Father, are, are, are great blessings, Father. And that no one great can take their, their joy from them once they find out That's that it. their joy comes from your son, Jesus. Thank you. So I say thank you. thank you. I ask that you continue to watch over your pastors, Father. Continue to provide your word for them, Father. So yes, we may feed yes, your children, yes. Father. And may your children get full on their word, Father. Be strong enough to take your word, word to the world, Father. Yeah, Lord. And preach your word, teach your word, Father, to yeah. all those, Father. And all those who do not understand, Father. And all those who understand, Father, they come to you, Father, and realize, Father, that you are the one that you live in God. Yes, Lord. Yes, so I say thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Father.
I've learned in this old life. Yeah. I've learned that the boogeyman ain't real. You got that right. I've learned that a lot of things are not real yeah. in this life. Yeah. But one thing I do know. All right. Because I have tried. Yes, sir. Jesus is real. He's real. Yes, sir. You sitting here today let you know that he is real. That's right. When you ate your dinner last night, he is real. When you put your clothes on this morning, he is real. He looked after you when you was in the image of death sleep. Come on now, you know it. But he touched you with the finger of life this morning. Thank you, Lord. That you may see this day. This day. That was not promised. Yes, sir. Yes. So if you don't believe Jesus is real, uh, you better go take another look at it. Come That's on right. Now. Come on now. And at this time, we're going to have a musical selection. But before the musical selection, today, we have our own coming to bring the word of God. Amen. Amen. Today, we have Dr. Brian Shannon. Amen. 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 And before... Dr. Shanley, come. I want you to raise your right hand. I want you to say, Dr. Shanley. Dr. Shanley. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Dr. Shanley. Dr. Shanley. And after the musical selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of our own, Dr. Brian Shanley. Amen. Amen. Need my help, Pastor? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I
The synoptics cover what Christ said and did in front of the world, but John covers what Christ said and did in front of his disciples behind the closed doors. Very important that you don't miss that, all right? Because if some video game playing pothead, porn watching nutcase who thinks that he knows something tries to get his brain damaged mind around the Bible, out. not knowing what he's looking at, starting off from an anti Christian, bigoted position to begin with, he tries to tell you, you know, the gospels contradict each other. I know because I saw it on A and E in a documentary, you see. And you literally believe him then you deserve whatever happens to you because I'm telling you the truth right now and he doesn't have access to this information because he's busy doing something else. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. John doesn't have the Sermon on the Mount because Jesus gave it in Galilee and John takes place in Judea. Wow. Matthew, Mark, and Luke don't have Jesus' I am Come statements out, teach, and they teach. don't have the resurrection of Lazarus because these things happened in Judea and the synoptics took place in Galilee. If I write a book describing my adventures preaching the gospel in Chicago, and then I write another book describing my adventures preaching the word in Minneapolis, does the fact that the Chicago book doesn't mention what happened in Minneapolis mean that I don't believe what happened in Minneapolis? Because the fact that happened in Minneapolis never happened. And the fact that the Minneapolis book doesn't mention what I did in Chicago mean that I never went to Chicago. And Come on with the word. Happened. Come on with the word. No. You'd have to be an idiot to believe such an illogical conclusion. On, yeah. And I tell you, professing to be wise, they became fools. Is that not what it says? Critics of the Bible have these educational deficiencies, and they project it onto the scenario, and they try to tell you that the Bible has problems. No, they just don't know what they're talking about. That's all it is. All right, all right. But they sucker naive people all the time and lead yeah, them away yeah, from Christ yeah, because yeah. of absolute horse crap. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it comes from a lack of study. If the books that took place in Galilee don't mention what happened in Judea, and if the book that took place in Judea doesn't mention what happened in Galilee, this should not be some kind of crisis in your life. Right, your faith right. should not be shaken because right. this is not a problem. It's actually what you'd expect to see. Right. Uh -huh. I was debating a Muslim once, and he uh, pointed out the genealogy of Christ in Matthew and the genealogy of Christ in Luke, and he literally said, look how different they are. <laughs> it, the, this is a contradiction, you see. And uh, the fact that the scripture has this problem means that God could not have revealed it. And he shut the book arrogantly and scoffed like he just revealed the blockbuster, like he just revealed the case cracker, like he just revealed the game changer. It was a microphone drop, as they would call it, the young kids nowadays. He thought he just made some kind of point. So I simply pointed out there's two different target audiences. Matthew takes the genealogy of Jesus back to Abraham because he's reaching out to a Jewish audience who looked up to Abraham and knew the Messiah had to come from Abraham. Luke takes the genealogy of Jesus back to Adam in order to let his pagan Gentile audience know that Jesus came to save all races of people, all classes of humankind, and pagan Greek people who never heard of Abraham and didn't care about old Jewish prophecies wouldn't have cared about that anyway. Focusing on that portion of an event that's relevant to the audience you're seeking to reach, it's not a problem. Don't let your faith in Jesus and your trust in the Bible be threatened by people who don't know what they're talking about. We're going to break down the Bible passage and we're going to get out of here and beat the other denominations to the restaurants. <laughs> Verses 1 and 2, in the beginning the Messiah existed, the Messiah was with God, and the Messiah was God. He existed in the beginning with God. If you followed my series on this, I've already dealt with these verses. Uh, that phrase, in the beginning, comes right out of Genesis 1-1. John's taking you back to the beginning of time and space. The only of the four Gospels that starts there. And he's letting you know that at the time of the events in Genesis 1-1, when God created the heavens and the earth, Jesus had already passed his been in existence before. From eternity, he never had a beginning. God the Son enjoyed a family-style, father-son relationship with God the Father in the third heaven, reigning over the universe that hadn't even been created yet. Right. Though God the Son was a distinct person from God the Father, God the Son, as to his nature, was divine, every bit as much so as God the Father. Yeah. And for the phrase in verse 1, the Messiah was God, if you know your New World Translation, published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, propagated by the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses, they have translated as the word was a God. A lowercase g wow. God. Number one, the letter A is an indefinite article. Number two, in the Greek language, there is no indefinite article. Therefore, the A doesn't belong there because it's not there. The rules of Greek grammar don't allow you to add stuff like that. Anytime you hold to a theological position that 
To make it seem scriptural requires you to add words to the Bible that aren't even in there. You've got a fundamental problem. Right. Yeah. Don't add crap to the Bible that it doesn't say. That's that it. God That's hasn't it. revealed. On, I'm reminded of Revelation chapter 22 verse 18. If anyone adds anything to the words of this book, God will strike them with the plagues that are written in this book. When one of these people knocks on your door, show them the door. Verse 3. Through him all things were made, and apart from him nothing was made that has been made. So God the Father is the architect, but God the Son is the construction worker who actually did the labor of creating the universe. All right, all right. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9 discusses God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.16 says of Jesus, by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. All things. Hebrews 1-2 discusses God the Son through whom God the Father made the worlds or the ages. Revelation 4-11, in heaven they're praising Jesus with the words, you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. The next time you look up at night and you see the sky and you see the moon and the stars and the planets, I want you to remember that Jesus made that. Yeah, the next yeah, time yeah. you look at a mountain and an ocean and a breathtaking piece of scenery, a beautiful sunset, I want you to remember that Jesus made that. Yeah, the yeah, next time yeah. you hold a baby in your hands or you look in the mirror and see that thing that's fearfully and wonderfully made, I want you to remember you better Jesus come made that. Right you the next come time you talk right about somebody in a negative way that hurt their feelings, I want you to look at them and say, Jesus made that person. Yeah. Verses 4 and 5, in him was life, and that life brought light to humanity. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. John has went from describing Jesus as the Word, or the Memra, or the Messiah, and is now describing him as both the life and the light. As God the Son, as the creator of the universe, Jesus is the source of all the biological existence of everything, and everyone in the whole universe. You are held together mathematically on the atomic and the material level because he's keeping you. You are allowed to draw a breath because he causes it to happen. Colossians 1.17, in him all things hold together. Jesus is the creator and the sustainer. You were able to roll out of bed this morning because Jesus caused it. He's the giver of physical life, but when you are born again, he's also the giver of spiritual life. Jesus gives salvation and pardon to the guilty and he gives hope to the hopeless. He's truly the spiritual water of life. And if you drink from him, you'll never go thirsty. He gives your life meaning. He gives your life purpose. And he is the way to heaven. And despite the fact that the dark and the evil and the cruel and the cold world have, they, they lack the intellectual, the moral, and the spiritual capacity to grasp who the heck they were looking at when he was here. And they rejected him so severely that they murdered him. The brave could not hold him. He rose from the dead with all power in his hands. Despite the fact that the dark and the cruel and the evil and the cold world has continued to attempt to prevent his Christian saints, us, for 2,000 years from advancing his saving yeah. message of the cross on, across the earth, it's been us and burning us to death to the point of imprisoning us and killing us on every continent. Yeah. The gospel still has not been silenced and it all continues right. on. The church militant, the church triumphant, the church expectant. Getting set to close, my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand something. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're yellow, whether you're red, whether you're brown, whether you're born in Asia, whether you're born in Africa, Europe, the Americas, you're rich, you're poor, you're tall, you're short, you're fat, you're skinny, whatever it is, whatever shallow earthly criteria that the television has taught you divides the human race. At the end of the day, as it relates to the flesh, we are all one blood. All the children of the world should be what? Loving each other in harmony. Don't make me sing it. The God will strike the building with lightning. I'm not a great singer. One common ancestor and his name was Adam. And as he stood in the garden of Eden, we all genetically existed inside of him. Every one of us. He was our covenant head. He was our representative. When he sinned, we sinned in him. When he rebelled, we rebelled in him. When he was cursed, we were cursed in him. The fall of the entire human race into sin and guilt was so epic and so radical and so cosmic that it required a solution of greater size and greater power than the fall itself. It required God himself to become flesh to set up a tent and a tabernacle on this planet. What was God the Father doing to God the Son on the cross? He was treating him like he was you. He was treating him like uh, he was me. He was giving him what you and I deserve. 
It's critically yeah. important that you accept, that you receive, that you place your trust in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of God the Son. You do how much you believe to show Jesus of Nazareth. The same way that you were given credit for Adam's sin, you can get credit for Christ's saving work. Amen. You will breathe your last. Everybody will. You will meet God the Son. And if you're one of his children, he's going to greet you with a hug as Savior. But if you're one of his protectors, he's going to greet you as a judge and tell you where you need to go. What's it going to be? You need to quit playing games. People are dying all the time, all over. There's a shooting just yesterday. Who, what if you were on that block? You know, you got some plans tonight, right? What if you're going to be sitting on a, on a mortician slab? You can't... The, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. You don't know what a day is going to bring. That's right, sir. Repent of your sins and turn towards That's him right now right while right the offer is still on the table. Yeah. What are you going to do with Jesus? Neutral, you cannot be. For one day you will be asking, what is Jesus going to do with me? Right. Right. Thank you for listening. I hope something was said that edifies you. The door to the church is open at this point. Whether you're a... Christian, whether you're who needs prayer, or whether you're a non-Christian who's heard the word of the gospel and you feel your conscience punctured and you need to come forward and you need to put your trust in Jesus Christ. Maybe you haven't been to church in a long time and you think, I can't, I can't come back to those people. They're not going to accept what I've been through. I can't, I can't. Don't be ashamed. Come on, come on. I've done a lot of bad stuff. And that's just this morning. That's right, that's right. That's no, right. But, uh, we're family here. You can come back to the church family. It could be the beginning of a new chapter in your life. Amen. Want to sing
give Dr. Shanley a hand. He gave me something to take home and chew on. Amen, amen. And at this time, we're going to have our announcements by Sister Janetta Cooper. Amen. It's okay to clap. <laughs> 